Okay, hey y'all. Um, I'm really nervous making this video because just due to the fact that my baby, my pregnancy, everything, I kind of kept it dear to me. Even I had like an amazing pregnancy up until birth, but I won't even say up until birth because everything serves a purpose. So I had an amazing pregnancy, but it was just something that I really held dear to me. Like a lot of people didn't know I was pregnant until I started like posting up pictures and stuff like that. Even when I started posting up pictures, like, it just wasn't, it was just wasn't a topic for me to like talk about on social media or stuff like that. You know, just with my friends and my family and stuff like that. Um, yeah, and a lot of people didn't even know I had my baby. I had my baby two weeks ago, and people just now finding out today that I had my baby. So, I was a little, I'm a little nervous making this video. It's getting hot. Okay. My delivery on how I had my baby seven weeks early due to the fact that I had preeclampsia. So, preeclampsia is um, hypertension. Basically, your blood pressure is extremely high and when your blood pressure is extremely high that can cause you to have seizures it can cause you to have um a stroke or you know when your blood pressure is really high and it affects the baby because at that point blood stops flowing to the placenta so the best way to treat the preeclampsia is to deliver the baby now the whole story on I didn't even know I had preeclampsia. Um, when you think of high blood pressure, you think about eating a lot of salt, you know, being obese, you know, like that's not the only thing that can happen to cause you to have blood pressure. But when you think about high blood pressure, you think about excessive salt. And if you know me, you know, throughout my pregnancy that I was eating clean. Like I was eating clean to the point where people used to tell me like, Girl, eat a burger, eat a milkshake, or the baby is tired of working out. The baby is tired of eating a salad. I just, I was eating like that because I wanted to make sure that I remain healthy. Like, I didn't want to, I didn't want to overdo it. So when it was time for me to snap back, I had like a hard time. So I was just trying to remain healthy, just remain balanced. And even when I was working out, in the beginning, I was still lifting weights. But I got to a point where I'm like, okay, whatever, I'm going to just walk. I was walking three miles a day so i kept my body good like i kept myself together in the beginning of my third trimester i had to um go see my doctor every two weeks so i seen him three times before i was hospitalized so this was between each of these times are between like a two week span so two four six so over so about a month and two weeks right so the first two weeks um they noticed that my blood pressure was not high, but it was higher than usual. So for me, you know, like I said, my blood pressure was moderate. It stayed where it was supposed to. It was pretty much normal. But when they noticed that my blood pressure was high that one time, it wasn't something that they were like, uh, you know, so just nothing that they was worried about. Um, I had an episode where I was, I had two episodes where I was, um, while I was working, you guys know I do hair. I was seeing stars, I began to see stars, and my vision began to get blurry, and I felt like I was about to faint. So, you know, me not knowing what's, you know, what was wrong with me, I figured it had something to do with the baby, of course, because that's not something that usually happens to me. I hit up my doctor, my OBGYN that I was seeing at the time, to let him know, like, hey, so-and-so happened to me. And he said to me, you know, you have an appointment coming up in another week or so, at that appointment, we'll go ahead and check your blood work we'll check your blood to see if you're if you're anemic and stuff like that lo and behold the the dizziness the blurry visions the feeling like i'm about to faint those are symptoms of preeclampsia so and on top of that my blood pressure not being high but being higher than it usually is he didn't pay that no attention so when i went and got the blood work he told me the blood work came out fine so and so but that same appointment I gained seven pounds in two weeks. Now, my chart, I was only gaining like two to three pounds a month. Like, so me gaining seven pounds, that was kind of like, whoa, to me, you know, especially to me with me gaining two to three pounds. But to the doctor, it was kind of like, okay, his response to me dead ass was, watch out for the carbs. You know, you should watch out for the carbs because I gained seven pounds. And 
another thing with the preeclampsia is kind of like your body is retaining fluid. So with your body retaining fluid, that could be excessive water weight or, you know, your your legs get swollen and stuff like that. So I gained an additional seven pounds and it wasn't from no carbs. It was from the water retention, which the doctor failed to, which the doctor failed to like pay attention to. Boom, I had the episode again. I let him know. No, the first time I had the episode, he let me, he told me, hey, let me know if it happens again. So it happened again, and I let him know that it happened again. And he brushed it off again. In that same appointment, my blood pressure was higher than the previous time that I came. Remember, I told you all my blood pressure was higher, but it wasn't like, it wasn't high for anybody to be worried, but it was higher than before. And... When I told him I had that happened to me again, he was like, well, as long as you didn't pass out, like, as long as you didn't pass out, you have nothing to worry about. But I'm like, I felt like I almost passed out. And he was like, well, like I said, as long as you didn't pass out, there's a difference between feeling like you're about to pass out and passing out, so I wouldn't worry about it. So I'm like, okay, cool, whatever. You know, me not knowing. And of course, I call my mom for everything because my mom is a nurse, and she was a little concerned about the fact that I was seeing the stars and stuff like that and the doctor was kind of brushing it off or whatever and he was oh what he did tell me was stay hydrated okay boom comes july 28th mind y'all july 28th my baby shower was july 31st come july 28th i go to my doctor's appointment i feel fine i feel okay and they got my they did my blood pressure and i believe my blood pressure was like 169 over 90 it, it could have been 90 or it could have been 90 something and i overheard them like the the person like the how do you call them like the nurse's assistant because it wasn't really the doctor the doctor's assistant when she came to do my blood pressure she was talking to the doctor and, and he was like what when she said my blood pressure and then when she had them my blood pressure she was like whoa it's really high and then when it was time for me to weigh myself, I gained 14 pounds in two weeks. So again, that's the water retention. So imagine I gained, that's 14 pounds and then 12 and then seven. No, I'm sorry. It wasn't 14 pounds. It was 11 pounds. I gained 11 pounds plus the seven. So that's what? 18 pounds? Seven? Yeah. 18 pounds if I'm wrong. For me, whatever. <laughs> the doctor was like, hey, you know. And every time I go to the doctor's office, I have to pee in a cup. And I don't know if the previous times that I went when he was saying my blood pressure was higher than normal, but it wasn't like severely high, if he was checking my urine. Because another another way that they can detect preeclampsia is that there's protein in your urine. So when he checked my protein, when he checked my urine that day on July 28th, I had protein in my urine. So once he's seen that and on top of the, the on top of the blood pressure, he's like, okay, yeah, it seems like you have preeclampsia. So my OBGYN at the time, he doesn't, not at the time, my OBG, that's another story, y'all. This man doesn't deliver and he did tell me that he didn't deliver. He told me that he wasn't going to be able to deliver my baby because he would have been out of town that day. But lo and behold, he doesn't deliver. Whatever. That's a story for another time. Um... He's like, yeah, you have preeclampsia. I'm going to send you to Memorial Regional. And I was supposed to go to Memorial West to deliver, but I never met the doctor. But he said, because I'm going to be having, more than likely, I was going to have to have my baby early. Because like I told y'all, preeclampsia, the way to cure the, pre to treat the preeclampsia is to deliver the baby. So he was like, you know, they have an amazing he, they have an amazing NICU. I want you to go to Memorial Regional. So I'm like, okay, cool. And when I had called my cousin and my sister to let them know, like, hey, this is what happened. This is what's happening. I'm going to Dr. Boo Boo Boom. Um, both of them had preeclampsia, but I don't know if they had preeclampsia as severe as I did. I mean, I don't think so because my cousin, she told me, she was like, girl, you're going to be there for 28 to 48 hours. They're going to let you out maybe tomorrow or the next day. And that's the same thing that Jody told me. But when I was when I got there, they took my blood pressure, and my blood pressure was 174 over 110. So before I even got there, I had went and got something to eat because I know that they, Brianna and Jody had told me that they wasn't gonna let me eat. So I'm like, let me go get something to eat first. And I hope I'm not talking too fast. <laughs> so I'm like, let me go get something to eat first. So I went to go get something to eat, 
and then I went there. Um, when they took my blood pressure, my blood pressure was 174 over 110. That blood pressure, I absolutely remember. Because everybody was like, oh my God, like, whoa. And then when the doctor came to me, he told me that I have severe preeclampsia. So it wasn't like a moderate or, you know, a mild preeclampsia. I had severe preeclampsia because my blood pressure was so high. So what they did was, they told me that they were going to have to observe me for the 24 to 48 hours. My job. July 28th, my baby shower was on July 31st, so that is 29.30, like, the day before my shower. I'm, if I were to be released, that'd be the day before my shower. Didn't get my hair done, didn't get my, didn't get my nails done, didn't get my feet done. Like, I didn't get nothing done. I had my dress and stuff. I didn't even try my dress. So I'm like, do I have to cancel my baby shower? And I was really pushing on, like, trying to hold off until, like, I really knew for sure, for sure that they wouldn't let me go. I thought my blood pressure would get better. So my blood pressure didn't get better. It remained at that severe rate. So they were worried. So the first medication that they put me on was magnesium. Now with magnesium, you can't move, you can't walk around because they put a catheter in you. So the catheter is like, they put the, they put like a balloon up your bladder so it kind of like drains your urine for you so you don't have to get up to the bathroom you don't have to do anything you just lay there and it drains the urine for you you don't even have to push to pee it comes out for you they put me on catheter um they started giving me medication and also i was having a really bad headache i know they have me on magnesium magnesium goes ahead and it stops you from having seizures. It stops you from having strokes. That's what I was leaning towards because my blood pressure was so high. So they put me on the magnesium so quick. The initial plan was for me to stay until I hit 34 weeks so I can have the baby. So they were really pushing for me to hit 34 weeks. So cool, whatever. Now throughout me trying to get to 34 weeks, we were trying to make sure my blood pressure was under control. We was taking a little beta law. They were giving me Levada Law, that is um, a medication for blood pressure, and it was giving me ibuprofen like every eight hours. But my blood pressure, I mean, I think the blood pressure was, it was going up and down, up and down. This is where the problem began, where I started getting swollen. So another reason why I think that I was swollen, because now this is like day three of me getting being there, my thighs started getting swollen. So. My thighs started getting swollen, my hands started getting swollen, then my face started getting swollen. So once I started getting swollen, you know, they're like, oh, that can be from the preeclampsia and that can be from the, the water retention, of course. So they're still pushing for the 34. I was there from July 28th to August 5th. So that's 28th to 29th. That's, it's like a, that's, that was like a week. A week and two days. So by the time I got to August 1st, my face and my hands and my body, like my lower extremities, was getting extremely swollen. And I had a severe headache and I was taking the medication and it wasn't going away. Then at that point, they're like, okay, you're going to labor and delivery. They didn't eat because they were, they wanted me to remain on a water diet. So I was just drinking like Chicken broth, water, straight water. They was giving me juices, jello, popsicles and stuff. So when August 1st came, one of the doctors came. It was like, I think it was Dr. Mufasa. He was like, okay, well, since the headache isn't going away and you're getting more swollen and swollen by the day, we have to deliver the baby. So automatically I'm thinking a C-section because I know, I know, I, I mean, not knowing like how it really goes. I'm like, dang, am I not ready? But they were they give me they gave me the chance to try to push. So because I was 33 weeks, my cervix was closed. So they gave me medication to try to loosen up my cervix so then I can get induced. And sometimes the medication that they gave me will induce you. So they did they gave me the medication. I took the medication six times, but it worked. So he put me on another medication that I could have another medication that would have tried to open up the service and now you check you check it in 12 hours and I only took it that one time and when the 12 hour mark came my cervix still didn't open so he let me know like okay 
you gotta have that you have to have a c-section so when they come and they check my blood pressure they come and they check to see if i have a headache cause my pain i let them know i was still having a headache so at that point dr Mufasa said okay we're gonna have to deliver you so i'm like oh my gosh oh my gosh so they moved me yeah they moved me to labor and deliver for and at that point my boyfriend could my boyfriend was able to come upstairs with me because you could only have one person in labor and delivery with you. That experience right there, I don't know, thinking about it, it makes me want to cry. Because, but they gave me general anesthesia in my spine. And once they told me, like, we're putting something in your back, like, I started crying. Because I'm like, oh my God, like, this is what people go through and they have to get epidural. But I'm just thinking a lot of stuff. And... From my stomach down, I was numb, and it was the weirdest feeling ever. And I started boohoo crying because I was scared. I really felt like I was about to die. Like, I really felt like I was about to die. I couldn't feel my toes. I couldn't feel my leg. It was just so weird for me. C-section comes. Um, it was pretty. It was. I mean, I think I was there in total between getting set up and like doing the anesthesia and actually delivering the baby i was there for 45 minutes so when it was time for dr mufasa to like cut me stitch me up deliver the baby that was like a 10 to 15 minute process like me and my boyfriend was sitting down talking about food like he was trying to distract me he was talking about what i was going to eat because i wasn't able to eat for those two days um the mother the nurse was like come on come on come on take a picture take a picture take a picture and it was just that fast and then it took a piece of picture of baby ledge and um yeah that was it for the c-section but after that like i couldn't i couldn't be with my baby after that for one because he was born early so he had to be rushed to the NICU my baby was on a breathing machine um he was on a breathing machine and everything it was kind of like hard to see I couldn't go there but my boyfriend was able to go so the pictures and stuff that he showed me so yeah that that portion right there being on the um just not being able to be my baby and of course after having the c-section I had to be there for an additional I think they let me go after two days they kind of let me go early because after you deliver they want to make sure you have bowel movements before you leave I had a bowel movement the next day like one thing about my digestive system, it do not play. It do not play. And that's because I be eating my greens throughout my whole pregnancy. I was eating my greens. But, um, and then I couldn't walk because even after I had the baby, I was on magnesium still because of my blood pressure. And because I was on magnesium for so long, for a week and some change, for a week and two days, my baby ended up having magnesium in his system so due to the fact that he had magnesium in his system he couldn't eat for his first three days he could not eat um i thank god because day two i think i okay i gave birth on day on day three by day i mean on august third so by august six my baby was off the breathing machine and that's nobody but god he was off the breathing machine breathing on his own and i'm just so thankful i'm just so grateful how god just showed up and showed out like he does every time he was there with me he was there with legend he was there he was there and i'm just so thankful but i don't know really know how to end this video because postpartum i still have I'm still dealing with the preeclampsia postpartum, though they said the way to treat the preeclampsia was to deliver the baby. Now, after that, I had the baby and I finally went home. Like, my lower extremities were still swollen. Hands were still swollen. My face was still swollen. He's not home with me just yet. He's still in the NICU. But God is doing his thing and my baby's making progress every single day. Every day. He's only two he's only been in there for two weeks, so but every single day he's making progress. So I don't know how, I mean there's so much more to tell y'all like how I'm going through the postpartum preeclampsia, how I got my swelling to go down because it wasn't easy and my mom was getting really worried because it looked like I was starting to get pockets in my thighs like it was really bad that i couldn't close my legs like i couldn't close my thighs like my thighs are already juicy but 
I couldn't even close my thighs. So it was something to really, really be worried about. So I guess I'm gonna do a part two to tell you guys how I dealt with the postpartum preeclampsia, how I'm dealing with it now, how I'm dealing with my baby being in the NICU, and just, you know, the process of everything by far. I know this is just the beginning. I haven't even had my baby yet, so I can't even tell y'all what is there to come. But this right here, I just wanted to let you guys know, and I wanted to bring awareness to preeclampsia. Um, if you guys, you know, I know a lot of you that's pregnant, right? I do want to share my story on how I delivered my baby. So I'm gonna make this like a series or something. So part two will be coming soon. Thank you guys for watching. I'll have another video and thank y'all for watching.